Once the ECAM actions are completed, the pilot monitoring will then refer to the corresponding electrical emergency config summary. Uh, this is broken down into phases of flight and gives a guidance on the main limitations and flight capability of the aircraft and can be used in the decision making process for the crew. First, we will look at the cruise phase. Fuel. During the ECAM procedure, we established our fuel gravity ceiling and we know we can main flight level 320 for the remainder of the flight. There is a note about the centre tank being unusable by gravity. Given that we're in the later stages of the flight, at this point there's no fuel remaining in the centre tank. The last note for landing distance performance drives us towards the QRH, or the appropriate performance tool. The overriding point here being is that the landing distance is going to be considerable. Well, let's take a look at the approach considerations. Uh, we are capped to in-op, which is a rather backwards way of saying we're cap one only. Uh, we have a minimum wrap speed of 140 knots, uh, below that the wrap will stall. We need to consider the configuration timing on the approach, uh, the slats and flaps are slow. For landing we're going to use flap 3, and very importantly, when the landing gear goes down, the flight controls will revert to direct low, and we need to use manual pitch trim. Next we'll look at the landing part of the summary. These points here are primarily concerned with the handling of the aircraft. For flare, only two spoilers are available per wing. This is just another way of saying that three are in op, so we have two available and the ailerons on each side. Worth mentioning at this point that both radouts are inoperative, so the cues for flare may not be there, so callouts could be made by the pilot monitoring. The next points here relate to the deceleration of the aircraft. Obviously we have no reverses. For braking, we are alternate without anti-skid, and the max brake pressure should be modulated to 1000 psi. And finally, due to the loss of both BSCUs, we have no nose wheel steering. Uh, the final consideration is for the go around. While not specifically stated, uh, the go around will be in direct law, so the pilots need to consider their handling and the pitch power coupling. Uh, the QRH summary mentions that when the landing gear is uplocked, the aircraft will improve, it will upgrade the flight controls to alternate law with protection lost. 